It's finally here, Shedsian dropped 7 brand new components and I got an exclusive first look. These are next level, you're going to be blown away how good they are. We are diving right in and we are starting with the easiest one which is the spinner. So no longer loader 2, animate spin, size 4 and things like that, we just put in the spinner and our spinner is being rendered. We can put it also inside of our buttons. Everything that we need to do is just to put in some kind of state if we have is loading and display this spinner and that's it. That's everything that we need to do. We can also change the icon if we want so we can have the same spinner throughout the whole project. For me, this is really cool because we have just one component like this spinner without many tailwind class names which is leading to much cleaner code. Moving to the next one, we have keyboard component. This one is for rendering keyboard keys. And it is really simple. We have just a keyboard group and keyboard component. We can put those together like this and we can display keyboard keys inside of our UI. This component is so awesome and simple and it has many use cases. Now in modern web development, you've probably seen things like this search documentation right here where we have command K or control K depending on your machine where we are opening basically our search documentation. So this here, I would say that now this is the new keyboard component. I used badge before for something like this, but this is much better for this use case. Let's move to the next one. We are starting now with a little bit more complex components. So here we have button group and it's a container that groups related buttons together with consistent styling. And if you were using ShadCM before, you probably had to build something like this. And you were fighting with top left rounded none, bottom left rounded none, and on this button top right rounded none, etc. to build something like this. But now we can just use a button group as simple like this and we can put in inside the button one and button two and everything will merge together. And not only that, but we can put in also the drop down like this. So we can put in the button and next to it a small button, which is actually a drop down. And now we have like the entire thing. And if we check the code here, so we have the button group inside we have one follow button so this is just a simple outline button and then we have a drop down menu where as child we have another button which is basically part of our button group and then we can see it merge like this and it is much better much cleaner ui and it is really looking good and we can see here also that we can mix it up with inputs so here we have this select where we can change our currency and here an input where we are putting in our amount with this submit button so if you check the code here we can see that we have the button group together with select then with input and with another button so there is no problem to put in together select plus input and then another button, everything merges in together and we again have a nice clean UI. I really like this button group and I think this is going to be big, like we all need to learn all these things really quickly and to adapt with the new Shed CN so we can create amazing things like this. Next component is input group and this one is really interesting. Again, something that we struggled with before is now really easy and in some ways reinvented with this ShedCN input group. So input group lets you add icons, buttons and more to your inputs. You know all those little bits you always need around your inputs. And this is true. So before to put in the icon like this inside of our input, we had to handle the absolute positioning. So we needed to put here absolute position for our button relative for our input, then to move the padding a little bit to the right so we can push the text to go from here. But now we can just put in the input group add-on and inside we can put the search icon and everything is ready for us and we can just use the input with icon without any struggle. So if we are not struggling with adding icons, why would we struggle with adding buttons? So in the same manner, we can add buttons inside of our inputs. So here, if we check 
this code right here. We have the input group, we have input group input, which is basically our inputs, and we have the add-on where we are putting input group button in the end. So here we are deciding, same like the regular button, what is happening on click. We are putting the size, variance, etc. We can also put here, we can see the icon check, icon copy, if our state is, is copied, and it looks like this. So we can just put in the button inside of our input without any hassle, so we can just put it like this and that's it, it is working. Same goes for text, labels, tooltips, so we can put in everything that we need just inside of our input. You see this HTTPS, I created this, I remember like at least 10 times and I was always copy pasting my own component, but now we can just use this input, what's it called, input group add-on and we can just put in HTTPS and we have our URL input field easily in like 10 seconds instead of doing the custom work and everything ourselves. And good thing to know, it is also working with text areas. So it's not only for the inputs, we can put things around in text areas. Check this one out. Would you ever say like this is a text area? I would think this is some kind of div with text area just built in inside. But this is just a regular text area. If we check the code right here, we can see that it is just an input group with bunch of add-ons and custom things that were just like built in inside of this text area and it looks cool like this. And here we have some input examples with spinners just like to show off and we can move to the next one which you are probably waiting for. This component is called field. And this is the future, how are we going to write forms inside of our applications? Field is a component for building really complex forms. And the amazing thing about it is that it is made to work with all form libraries, server actions, React hook forms, Tensec form, or bring your own form. So this is incredible. We are no longer stuck to React hook forms. We can actually use whatever we like. So we have now here field, field description, field error, and field label. And this is the basic field with an input. So we have here field, we have the field label, same like before, so we are putting in the username. Then we have the input where we are putting ID username and placeholder, and we have the field description where we can choose a unique username for our account. And here below, we can see that it looks basically exactly the same. So we have here the label, input and description. And now we can see that this field components work with all form controls. So inputs, text area, select, checkboxes, we have here the full example. And now we can just put in the regular form. So if we check in our code right here, we can see on the beginning of this file that we have just a regular form and on our input, we have the required. And if we now try to submit here, we're going to get here, please fill out this field. So this is working just like normally, like native way, but we can put in whatever form handler we want. So we can put in here React hook forms if we really want it. Maybe we don't want that one. We can use use action state or something like that. So it's totally up to you. It's totally flexible. You can use whatever you'd like. Then we can see in the next example, we have checkbox field. So we can just press here the labels and everything is working right. Then we have here the group fields together using field group and field set. So that's perfect for multi section forms. And if we check that one here, we can see that we can put in a field group. So we don't have to put like a separated div with flex and I don't know, gap two or something like that. We can just put in the field group and it will look nice like this. Then we can make the responsive easy using orientation responsive. And that switches between vertical and horizontal layout based on the container width. And that's really interesting concept. If we check the code here, we can see that we have now this field orientation responsive, meaning that if we change to mobile, so let's try that one out, we can put here, to mobile device and 
we can see that now this one is basically falling like we have a flex column instead of flex so we can see that now here the label and description are above this input and if we return back to desktop view we can see that here it's not like this now when we are on the big screen it is here like it is flex and not flex call so we are getting slowly that responsive orientation class to say it like that like some prop for responsiveness i'm wondering if this is going to be the case for all the components in the end that we're going to stop using like flex flex call and grids and stuff like that but let's see about that i'm not sure and i really like this next one we can wrap up our entire fields in this field label so meaning we can now click here on the entire div actually our field label and we can select our fields wherever we click this is also something that we maybe struggled a little bit before but now we can just wrap it up and that's it that is solved this field component is the biggest change in this shed cn release and will definitely need some time to get used to it should we use here again react hook forms or ten stack form or something else those are all good questions but in the end it's totally up to you you should do whatever is the easiest way for you to implement some features I'm definitely going to create some videos using this field component and I'll use all the best practices and the easiest way to get the proper validation and everything working right with our new forms. So stay tuned. Let's move to the next component. Next component is called item and this is basically a flex container where you can put in any kind of content. So we have here item, item content component, item description, media, title and we can write it like this so we can get this fancy looking div right here. So we have here the title, the description and this action button so we can create this clean UI easily with this item component right here we can see below also the examples with icons avatars or images so here we have the icon and it is really easy to add it if we check the code we have here the item media component and inside we are putting in the shield alert icon same thing with avatars right here so we are just putting in the avatar inside of that that item media and it's just going here it's easy as that we we just put it in and it has a nice clean responsive UI and we also have the item group so here we can see that we have three items going one below each other so if we check the code we can see that we are using here our item group and inside we are mapping through these people and we are putting in different items again with item media for avatars and things like that so this is really nice i would say that this is like a good use case for this item component would be different cards like we are always creating some cards inside of our projects so we can create like one item that can be a card where we can put things like this that we need like a card for our user card for our post or something like that and if we want to put in a link we can use the as child prop and we can put in the link as well and it looks really nice this is basically going to be a great thing to build different shed cm blocks for ui libraries so we can create some kind of item which we can just copy and paste with the shed cm registry commands and put in inside of our projects and then just reuse it for anything that we like and final component is called empty and we use it to display empty states inside of our app so same like with the item we have empty content description media title and we are writing it like this to get something like this so you've seen this probably on a bunch of projects when we don't have anything yet we are putting in some kind of empty state for example you didn't create any posts or you don't have any users inside of your table so this is a perfect use case for something like that we can just put in this empty state and it looks really nice 
We can see below the example with avatars, so we can put in anything that we want. We even have the example with input groups, so it's totally flexible. We can just build whatever we like for our empty state to display it in case we don't have anything and we want to show something like this. This is really a good example for 404 page. We can just create something like this if for our custom 404 page. And that's it, seven new components from Shed CN. Tell me in the comments what do you think. I'm really excited. I don't care about the iPhone update or Claude Sonnet 4.5 and things like that. I was waiting for this Shed CN update and I'm really impressed. I really like the new field component and input groups, button groups. Just tell me in the comments what do you like. I'm really curious if, I mean, if you don't like it, that's okay also. And for more content like this, Join the Mighty Horde, subscribe, become a true web dev warrior.